Revolve, Man's Scientific Rise to Godhood by Aaron Franz Chapter 10 Let's Get Real The element of the unknown is without a doubt the most intriguing aspect surrounding the singularity. Why wouldn't it be? The unknown is eternally appealing and elusive. There is no human way to understand what the singularity would bring, but what else is new? All attempts to completely understand reality inevitably lead to disappointment. This is the power of the mystery, the true and eternal mystery that lies beyond all human interpretation of sacred geometry. What we face is none other than a collective struggle with the unknown. A profound consequence arises from simply labeling our situation a struggle. However, this label is sadly accurate. Operations here on Earth have long been directed toward the discovery of a predetermined solution to a grand problem. The dialectic has been tacked onto natural existence from the start, and as such we have been yearning for godhood ever since. The ancient allegory of paradise lost makes it seem as though divine was once the state of man, and that this has been long forgotten in time. The high esoteric system that underlies all religion was designed to reflect this first cause. With the power of free will, self-righteous individuals have decided to crown themselves gods of this world. Science is nothing more than a means to their end, an end drawn up in the beginning. Dialectic materialism has separated us from our innate connection to eternity and replaced it with one large struggle. This has been done to keep us forever running in circles as the gods complete their work of the ages. Everything in our world has been explained in terms of conflict. Since the dawn of man, conflict has been manufactured to keep populations weak and in need of protection. This is a profound realization to come to, although it is impossible to understand for anyone who remains trapped within the intelligently designed illusion. There is, without a doubt, a grand illusion placed before our eyes, and its power is truly something to behold. It is a mathematic design, a completely practical view of material existence. The establishment of rules, codes, laws, guidelines, statutes, mandates and governance is all part of its calculated apparatus. Is it any wonder that law after law is now stacking up against us, against freedom itself? This is how tyranny is perfected. Safety and security build a psychological vehicle that we feel is necessary to drive on the road to freedom. Government is the DMV that issues our license. Permission to drive is granted by authority. Authority is a dangerous thing to bestow upon anyone or anything, as it is inevitably abused. We don't live in a free world. It's as simple as that. You can keep on justifying things in your mind in a vain attempt to prove this fact wrong. But why bother? It won't change anything. The box we live in is growing larger, but its fundamental structure remains the same. It grows by converging its massive system of rules into a single point. This is the singularity, a super dense black hole of codes, nodes and bricks. The brick is the building block of the stonemason, the perfected ashla. It is being squared on all sides. With perfect ashlas, a supposedly perfect society will be built. But this society will be perfect by what standard? In the grand scheme of things, we can see that humanity is small. This realization can lead innumerable directions, and the contemplation of God is a perfectly natural reaction to such thought. Thought is an interesting thing, for it is man's great gift, as well as the cause of his great sorrow. Open-ended questions have always perturbed those who need to know. An intelligent minority has always been aware of the true power of the mystery. That true power is this. When the infinite questions of life are left unanswered, true freedom reigns. All things are possible when one approaches existence in this way. When the mystery is solved, a directive force is established. Directors take the stage to lead us onward. Rules are drawn up that branch out from their solutions. A mighty oak tree is grown from a single acorn. Ideas are seeds planted in our minds. Ironically, in a world full of scientific answers, confusion reigns. Under such conditions, we need to remember how to ask questions. Questions will eventually lead us to the source of our long-forgotten freedom. It is surprising how much true knowledge can be attained by simply clearing the mind. 
as opposed to filling it with made to order thoughts. Quick and easy paths are hard to resist because they are the apparent ways to win our perceived cosmic race to the finish line. Have you ever wondered why we refer to ourselves as the human race? A race has a beginning and an end point. Race tracks end up exactly where they begin. They are circles. So where is it that we are racing to? We might just be going nowhere fast. Without a doubt, the highest performance vehicles you'd ever like to see have been designed and tuned to win this race to singularity. Team Human wants to take home that trophy, which is revolution itself. We have to evolve as fast as possible, because slow rides are for losers. In a world of winners and losers, who is who? The winners are all those who choose to join the team and work toward winning the trophy. The losers are those chumps who wait in line at the DMV just so they can drive the track and pay money for a ticket to watch the show. What happens to that tiny minority who choose not to participate in this perverse delusion whatsoever? The people who don't care about winning or losing, but instead enjoy living, what happens to them? All of the information contained in this book is useless if you cannot apply it in one way or another to your own existence. We truly must be able to live in the here and now, and so there has to be some practicability in these very words. Understanding that our world is filled with illusion is difficult, because we truly do need to be in touch with reality. So how do we transcend the illusion? How are we to make our way through this matrix we inhibit? How do we avoid the false choices laid before our feet? Why oh why does the world have to be this way? Well, the plain truth is that the world does not have to be this way. Things would be different if we wanted them to be. Simply understanding this fact is a great way to start truly living. It is amazing what can be accomplished when free will and choice are engaged. This is the great power that we all possess and which has always been marginalized by those few who wish to own it for themselves. Don't ever be afraid to accept the responsibility of free will. Never take it for granted or let anyone steal it away from you. It is your own divine right. Instead of buying into the grand lie, we can freely choose to be honest with ourselves. We can accept our shortcomings and gain real self-esteem. When we don't direct all of our energy toward pleasing someone else, we can finally find, find out who it is that we are. We can know ourselves. What a wonderfully elusive task this is. Recovering from all the abuse, physical, psychological and spiritual, is difficult, but worth the effort. Intense introspection is critical, it must be done before anything else. The world will continue to change, but the direction of the change will be influenced by the way we each choose to live our life. Continuing on the path of least resistance will only amplify the problems we have already. There is no such thing as a healthy quick fix. We must understand the cold hard facts. If anything is to be changed for the better, there is no avoiding this. The very facts of our dire situation are steadfastly denied by those people who are convinced that they know everything. These folks will flat out deny certain information because it does not fit within their intellectual toy box. Basically, this is what we all have been given to keep us in a state of mental childhood, a bunch of playthings a plethora of attractively designed words and ideas that we can endlessly toss around the sandbox. Lovely words such as democracy, progress, interdependent, order, enhance, improve, and others have all been deployed as psychological weapons. They are pieced together scientifically and in such a way that they spawn a completely believable virtual reality. Anything that exists outside the pleasing confines of this virtual world will not compute. Our reasoning system will not allow its impossible existence. Ridiculous notions, actual ghosts, will take form and become real, while cold hard facts go completely ignored, because they don't fit in, in the design of our virtual reality. This is how the war of ideas is waged. But victory has not yet been declared. Until such time that virtual reality can maintain itself autonomously and keep the masses completely content in their own ignorance, then the struggle will continue. The reality that most of us feel compelled to uphold is one of comfort. We want to remain comfortable. No one wants to rock the boat. 
Our flawed belief system provides us with a false sense of security, so we hold on to them dearly. We are told that we are living in the most scientifically advanced society that has ever existed. Because of this, we are free to enjoy our lives in the material splendor of the modern world. Medicine, travel, housing and entertainment have been amplified and we are much better off for it. Technological progress carries downsides, of course, but ultimately our improved comfort and happiness make up for it. Science has brought about miracles, it is poised to bring many more. If we keep progressing, then we will amplify all the scientific advances already achieved and unlock more that remain hidden. The general idea of progress is forever given a positive connotation. This is the paradigm we are living under. Actually, the modern scientific world has some serious problems, but they aren't the ones you will read about in magazines. It is truly amazing to see the natural world completely exploited as those who do so define their work as natural. These are the Dionysian architects. Natural existence has to be completely demolished so that a replacement may be built and proclaimed natural. There's no way that anyone would ever put up with this situation, not if they understood it overtly. This is why we are made to believe that this unnatural system is completely natural. We have to perceive it as an evolution of human ingenuity. We must be made to love it. All historical records must be evidence to the fact that we live in a wonderfully civilized and progressive world. Meanwhile, true crimes against humanity and nature are perpetrated on a daily basis. For the very few of these atrocities that are actually recognized by the media, their explanations are nothing more than distractions. We are told that they occur out of some vaguely defined evil that persists in the world. The source of this evil is either pinned on a scapegoat or left completely ambiguous. This is a simple diversion and it keeps the ball rolling. The true aggressor poses as the peacekeeper. It is the warlord who tells us that we need to bring democracy to the world. And he does this in the name of peace. We need to be peaceful as he continues his violence. We have to comply with his campaign of terror by accepting his bold-faced lies and cover stories. This reassures us because we get to believe that some sort of distant benefit will actually come from doing nothing. An interdependent world of peace is on the horizon. So feel good when the politician is giving his visionary speech about the future. He needs you to rally behind him to bring the light of the new dawn. Isn't it interesting that nearly everything we have heard about prehistoric humanity is presented in a negative context? When was the last time you heard anything about the virtues of this long lost era? Do you think maybe that our ancient ancestors led thoroughly healthy and spiritually fulfilling lives? Not if you have ever been to a museum or read a library book. All you ever hear is that cavemen, that is men who live in the dark, died at 20 years old and lived horribly up until that point. Elaborate stories have been constructed based on fossil evidence that leads us to believe that life prior to civilization was a complete horror, a constant struggle for survival. Everything is a struggle, we just can't catch a break in this great human race. These prehistoric stories are quite presumptuous if nothing else. How can we pretend to know what life was really like then? Is it possible that things may not have been as bad as we have been told they were? It is funny how events that predate history can be so clearly defined in the realm of ideas. You could say that the ancient world is now an officially sanctioned portion of history. The official story is pretty well accepted by most people. His story has been established in our minds and not surprisingly it substantiates the claims that we are living at the height of human progress and that our collective existence has forever been a struggle to survive. We have to admit the true scale of our ignorance to understand how far we have been misled. The primrose path to utopia sure looks good, but that is because it must. Why would we bother with it if we were happy with what we had already? Strong-willed people don't consent to slavery and that is why so much psychological warfare is used against us. It is deployed so that we comply with this project. We must keep our feet moving as we chase that carrot on a string. Forever we are improving and somehow everyone is depressed and neurotic. 
To mask this psychosis, we all drag ourselves into delirium and faithfully act as though nothing is out of the ordinary. Convenient justification comes in the fact that people have always had problems. And we are lucky to have pharmaceuticals to help us out. Are you against science or something? How can you question modern medicine? Would you rather eat roots for 27 years only to die in a freezing cold cave? Yeah, I didn't think so. Just shut up and like it already. This is the point of view of 90% of the population. Give or take 10%. An 8-hour workday, a 40-hour work week, some paid vacation and a 401k. Does all this amount to true progress? Do we feel vindicated in the many luxuries that our modern lifestyle provides? Is the luxury of captivity enough for us to forget the freedom of the wild? Is there something that we would rather be doing if we had the choice? The answer to this last question does not have a universal answer. Many people are completely content in their mundane life, whereas others daydream about a better career, fame, fortune, etc. Not everyone is psychotic enough to actually enjoy being abused day in and day out, and this is why we are given so many fantasies to chase. These flights of fancy keep our mind going in circles, as we constantly repeat, if only I had this or did that and on and on. If we want to get real, then we have to forget about these diversions. An unnatural world will spawn synthetic and useless alternatives to itself. The dissatisfied multitudes yearning for something better require direction. This is precisely where everything goes wrong for us. It is the directors who steer the direction of our natural impulse for freedom. They see to it that we don't ever do anything truly liberating. We are made to follow their templates for success, instead of empowering ourselves. We align to movements and ideas of mass appeal. This is where concepts such as transhumanism are seeded by respected and credible leaders. Men of letters show us the way to a brighter future. We need to start questioning our professed leaders. Who are they? And more importantly, with whom are they working? Do they have any affiliations with special interest groups? Do they purposely keep their involvement in these organizations quiet? Who pays them to do what they do? The overall structure that finance popular ideas has to be unraveled from the top down. When one takes the time to actually do this, it becomes clear that many apparent leaders are merely frontmen for big money special interests. The fact that it takes much reasoning to figure out exactly where all this money is flowing from should be a tip off as how things really work. We aren't meant to see the big picture. Our puppet leaders are given the role of mystical heroes. Like Jesus, they show the flock the way to salvation. Popular opinion is a powerful force to be reckoned with. This fact is well known, and a premium price is set on its ownership. It is this price that is paid by those with the most resources. We need to start directing questions at our true directors, if we can ever get around to actually tracking them down. Self-empowerment does not come from following the leader. It comes from deep introspection and honest self-evaluation. We need to question everything, especially ourselves. If we don't constantly re-evaluate our own condition, then we will be vulnerable to persuasion from others. We must remake ourselves. Otherwise, we will be led unwittingly to the death and rebirth ritual. Remember that the occult meaning of the death and rebirth ritual is self-improvement. This is the true power and it fulfills a deeply rooted human need. We must now truly change things. One way or another, we must improve. Realize that the most powerful forces on this earth have a vested interest in your personal improvement. They want to see that you are improved according to their standards. This will benefit them, not you. There certainly are greedy psychopaths out there. And don't think for a minute that they are all in prison or the cold hard streets. No, the wisest psychopaths know how to find power and hold on to it. They know how to justify themselves by appropriating the justice system that everyone else lives under and using it for their own purpose. They must remain above the law. The time that we are living in is so important that few are able to come to grips with its deep meaning. Life as we know it hinges upon the decisions that we all choose for ourselves. The entire world is affected by the actions of those beings living within it. This is your great responsibility. It is a gift. You literally have the power to change the world. 
you also have the option of defaulting on everything that matters by ignoring this responsibility. If too many people choose to default, not only will the answers to important questions be determined by psychopathic control freaks, but the questions themselves will be defined and in many cases deleted by them. Real questions will not be asked in the first place. It would be unlikely that anyone would even think to ask them. We face this situation today. Very important questions actually sound ridiculous to most people. We have been seduced into believing false answers. We have been made to enjoy completely artificial lives. Danger lies all around us and we can't even see it. Now is our chance to turn things around by calling this entire charade into question. We have a tremendous opportunity before us if we choose to reach for it. One important question to ask ourselves is, do we really want freedom? Do we even know what it is? If we do decide to be honest and really engage true freedom, then how does technology fit into this picture? Technology won't just go away, that is for sure, and we can't properly label it evil either. We could very well choose to use technologies to empower ourselves. It could be possible for everyone to be self-sufficient, free, and empowered through the use of technologies that assist in living their own chosen lives. The key word here is assist. Technology is a tool. It can be used to help us out. A whole new dynamic is now arising and it is something that most people take for granted. When the tool begins to integrate with the user, then the user slowly becomes dependent on the tool itself. Instead of fostering human independence, a state of dependence is created. A contemporary example of this can be witnessed in someone who finds himself out in public, completely lost without his smartphone. It appears as though the phone's intelligence has not rubbed off on its owner. He can't find his way back home without an internet map. This dependence on technology is a very real danger and something that is actually being encouraged as we go further and further down the road. Is it possible that the producers of technology are actually happy about this dependence? Is the lovely interdependent world we have heard about from political big shots to be an evolution of this trend? Would completely integrating tools into our biology strengthen or weaken us? Technology we are told is neutral. In a grand spiritual context, the truth of this matter may far exceed this base assumption. But for now, let's go with it and assume if it is true. Technology is a completely emotionless and indifferent thing. It can be used for any purpose. Could it be that we are jealous of this? Do we envy the pure performance of technology and its ability to do things faster than us? Complete control over emotions is a very popular theme within transhumanism. In part, this is due to a strength envy over the unfeeling genius of technology. Completely merging with emotionless technology is actually a higher act of love for anyone of this mindset. The old compassionless love that the Brotherhood of Saturn was so excited about is seen here in a different form. Human love is typically marked by emotional extremes. This is a terrible thing from a purely practical point of view. Emotions and typical human love get in the way of pure performance. Transhumanists want greater power. The human mind, laden with its emotional baggage, just slows down the development of this power. If we didn't get so caught up in emotion, then we could get down to business. Logic could finally be perfected in this way. This is a psychopathic dream come true. A world filled with people who are in perfect alignment with reason. There's no way that the situation we find ourselves in will ever just disappear. Reality must be confronted and it has to be done bravely. Some serious difficult answers await all those who begin to question everything. If we choose to find freedom, then we must be prepared. Self-discovery might just reveal an ugly sight in the mirror. Upon such revelation, we may choose to face our own personal horror without flinching or opt for the quick fix by taking a ride down the plastic surgeon. Realize that what you see in the mirror may just be an illusion, so do not be afraid. Take charge of your personal illusion and band it back to reality. The quick and easy route only leads to destruction. You can remodel your face again and again only to become a true life monster. 
This is what could cosmetic surgery addicts do to themselves, because they are unable to see the problems inherent in their own perceptions. See through the illusion and all will work out fine. Believe the illusion and you will become it. We must get real in every aspect of our lives. There is absolutely no reason to fear this reality, no matter how twisted it has become. It is what it is, and no amount of wishful thinking will ever do away with it. So face up to it. Understand what is happening and you will be ready. Don't ever sacrifice your spirit for someone else's benefit. Get real by constantly questioning everything. Keep your guard up for lies and distortions. Maintain eternal vigilance.